Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome on stage from Divergent 3D, Lucas Zinger. Hey, welcome, my friend. Welcome on stage. You, are, you already have a lot of fans, even without talking yet. It's great to That's see great. you. That's um, great. Welcome. Thank, Thank you. you so much for joining us. Um, so in very poor words, I've tried to explain what you guys are about. It's better if you do it, right? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So Divergent fundamentally was founded on a very ambitious mission. And that mission was to completely change, really reimagine how we design and manufacture complex structures. And the company was created to address the main pain points that we saw, environmental pain points, economic pain points, in automotive and aerospace and defense, which as you know, are really the two largest industrial manufacturing segments in the world. So we took on that very, very ambitious mission. And we said to really solve those pain points, we need digital production. And you know, that's a couple buzzwords for you, but for us, it was really a mission to create digital production for the first time. And what, what is digital manufacturing? What is digital production? It's creating a set of software, a set of hardware that is completely product agnostic. So if you imagine a factory, like the factory we have in Torrance, where in the same hour, you can manufacture a hypercar, like you saw in that video, a volume OEM's rear frame or front frame, and a aircraft structure, all back to back with no downtime in between. That's digital production. And six years later, 600 patents later, hexagon support later, we've created that system. And that system is running today, as Paulo said, in, in Los Angeles. And that system, in our view, is the first instance of digital manufacturing. And a quick synopsis on it is really three pillars that have been integrated. First, design software, not your typical CAD and you know, FEA suite, but rather a much more automated and efficient design workflow. And that design workflow really starts with a human input. And the human input is what product are we making? What are its attributes? What are its requirements? And we use that list of essentially requirements of that product and the volume that product can consume. And we run machine learning and AI across topology optimization, manufacturing simulation, both 3D printing and assembly. And we create a perfectly optimized structure. And I would say truly the structures that we create and the CAD that we end up with are truly the first time that we've had perfectly efficient structures. There's no engineer, not myself, you know, not even Paulo, that could take a gram out of that structure and not affect its requirements. So it truly is perfectly efficient. And then how do we actually manufacture that structure? It's a geometry you could never cast. It's a geometry you could never stamp or machine. We turn to 3D printing. Uh, unfortunately, we found a 3D printing industry that wasn't ready for prime time. So we set out, we created our own 3D printing hardware, our own software, and importantly, our own materials. And we run that AM module today to actually manufacture those parts. And then the last piece was, once you have 20, 30, 120 parts, how do you assemble them into a final structure? Sure. And we create a robotic assembly process where any number of these 3D printed parts enter and your complete structure comes out be it the fuselage of a drone, or the rear frame of a vehicle, or the full chassis of a hypercar. And combine those three, and you truly have the first instance of digital production. It's a super flexible concept that's got applicability to so many industries and parts and components. So if you think of it, this can be really transformational in terms of the economics of the, for instance, automotive industry for starters. So how do you think about business model? Absolutely. So today, the most accurate way to describe Divergent is as a tier one, but I'd say a very special tier one. So we supply our parts, our end product, uh, to Mercedes, to Aston Martin, to General Atomics. We supply them that fully engineered structure, and we act as their outside engineering arm, but most importantly, their outside manufacturing arm. And that creates not only 
you know, a better product for them to use. Yep. But it creates a different capital structure, to your point. So instead of investing upfront, betting hundreds of millions of dollars in hard tooling, and then, you know, hopefully getting that equation right, but oftentimes not getting it right, and having that very, very high barrier to entry, our system allows those manufacturers, those brands, to really be design-driven, to come up with the product they want to create, and then to outsource a lot of that manufacturing. And it becomes, from a very CapEx-heavy upfront investment, a big bet, uh, to a variable cost-driven equation. And that allows, actually, one, for faster design cycles, two, for a more capital light structure for the big OEMs, and three, for new entrants to come in. So in five, 10 years, we should see startups that really are getting into aerospace and automotive at scale with small teams and without massive funding sources. Right. And when you think of it, I mean, you've talked about way lower capex, you've talked about optimizing material that is required to build those chassis and components. Can you tell us a little more about the sustainability angle of what you're doing? Absolutely. And I'll draw on the, on the theme of optimism here as well. I think sustainability, it's such a critical problem. It's such a big problem. There's fear for good reason around it. We have to be optimistic to solve that problem. We absolutely have to be optimistic. Certainly, we need to understand the facts, but we can't dwell on the negative. And I often ask myself you know, two words, what if? And those two words really motivate me. What if we design this system? What if we create this new material? What if I made that difference? Those are two words that are very, very powerful for me and represent to me that mindset of optimism as well. And sustainability for Divergent, that was part of our founding mission. And sustainability for us is twofold, environmental and social. Yep. On the environmental side, we've really got three pillars to it. The first is dematerialization, essentially using less material in our structures. Our structures are 30, 40% lighter than the structures we're replacing with it's traditional huge. technologies. Yep. So 30, 40% less material, that's the most direct way to be sustainable, use less. The second principle we operate on is designing end to end, looking at life cycle analysis, cradle to grave from mining to disposal of that vehicle, not just the tailpipe emissions. And our manufacturing process from the design, from the servers, the HPCs we run through the disposal and recycle of our uh, end product uses less energy, uses less energy than traditional manufacturing. And then the last you know, and very important piece is what happens with the product when its useful life is over. And we engineer all of our structures, or I'd say 95% of our structures, in aluminum-based alloys. Those can be recycled, re-atomized, reprinted into a new product. Incredible. Think about a circular car. Yeah. Um, phenomenal. Um, so Lucas, obviously we're here at a Hexagon conference, so everybody's dying to know what specifically Hexagon yep. does for Divergent. Maybe a few words about that? Absolutely, absolutely. So I got to know Hexagon um, over five years ago. So when Divergent was a Series A company, we we're about a dozen or so people. I was operating also as an engineer, leading our assembly group, our robotics group. Hexagon came in and you guys actually supplied software and hardware, you know, laser trackers, TMAC frames, uh, manufacturing software, SA, and we used that, and it was critical for our development, absolutely critical to get to this point. More recently, over the last, I'd say, 18 months, our management teams have become very, very close. And at this point, you know, Hexagon, Divergent, I think we're together driving what I'd say is truly the adoption of digital manufacturing. And for me, you know, that's a mission where I'll continue to ask myself, what if? And I hope you all will as well. We really believe into what you guys are doing. Thank you, Lucas. Thank you.